Today on Monkey Life. Anxious moments as Chimp Jester goes under the knife following a diagnosis of mouth cancer. We're going to have to end going sort of right in here. Because the whole of that lip is going to have to go. An enormous felled tree helps the Gwenons scale new heights. It's where they really like to be. They like to be high up, they like to see what's going on, they feel safe. And the nursery orangutans have a ball with a colourful morning treat. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. I'm shocked. This animal is living in fear of its life at all times. The park provides a home for more than 260 primates from 24 different species. It's been a little over a week since Chimp Jester had a biopsy taken from a sinister-looking lump that had developed on the inside of his bottom lip. The results from the pathologist have come back. And they're not good. The lesion is a squamous cell carcinoma, a serious form of mouth cancer, and will need to be operated on immediately. But the procedure will be far from straightforward. It's completely necessary. If you have to remove a tumour, there's no point in doing anything except remove the tumour plus uh, um, uh, a sort of a strip around the tumour to make certain you've got all of it in one go. So there's no alternative but to be radical. If you were just removing half of it or scraping away the surface, you may as well not bother. It's got to all come out in one go. Wildlife vet John Lewis, an expert on chimpanzee anaesthesia, has called in local vet Dave Harding to carry out the operation alongside him. Since the biopsy was taken, the care team have been closely monitoring Jester's health. He's eating well, he's, he's maintained his appetite and his weight. Um, it's more fluids that are a struggle, so we've also been working on him taking fluids from a large syringe because if he needs post-op medication, we need to be able to guarantee that we're getting the full dose into him. Oh, you're amazing. I think we have to be optimistic. We've got a diagnosis, we know what we're dealing with and we know what needs to happen. And we've, we've got the best team here to do that. So um, we'll see what the future brings for him. For the second time in 10 days, Jester has been given an anaesthetic injection by hand. The team spend a lot of time training the larger primates to do this, to avoid the stress of darting. It doesn't take long for the drug to work, and Jester is quickly transported across to the park's animal hospital. You're gonna hold the upper jaw. John intubates the chimp, and once he's stable, Dave can get his first good look at the problem. I think we might have to just go across here. The medics need to come up with a plan to remove the large mass. We're going to have to end going sort of right in here. And at the same time, save as much of Jester's lip as possible. I think it's a better option to actually just lose, just to come across here. Um, and we and try and repair from, because the whole of that lip is going to have to go. Yes, and then we just try and s close the edges as much. The lump is malignant and can easily spread to other parts of the body. John took x-rays 10 days ago, which didn't show anything sinister. But to be on the safe side, Dave checks all Jester's vital organs for secondary tumours. It's looking pretty good in here. Certainly the liver looks fine. The results are encouraging. The additional benefit of the ultrasound is to check other organs, so uh, we can check liver, kidneys, and, and the abdominal cavity, just to check that there's no obvious sign of any, uh, any lumps that could indicate that, that this tumour has already spread. And I'm pleased to say that the uh, abdominal cavity all, all looks completely normal. 
it means Dave and John can proceed with their plan for the operation. But it's a complicated process, and it looks like it's going to be a long and stressful morning for the whole team. The last year has seen some big changes for the park's woolly monkeys. With new arrivals, house moves, and the launch of their first ever all-male bachelor group. And in the last few days, there's been another new addition to the Woolies. Pakaya has had a baby. We did have suspicions that she was pregnant. There's been a lot of mating between her and Enzo over the past of several months. Um, yeah, nice present little surprise to come into. Um, and yeah, both mum and baby are looking really great. Pakaya is an extremely experienced mum. This is her fourth child, and the second with dominant male Enzo. Since the infant's birth, the group have been in the smaller caged enclosure, so the primate care team can keep a close eye on mum and baby. It means the little one can experience the outdoors in safety. Sharon is pleased with how the pair are progressing. Everybody's looking really good and happy and comfortable, so time to give them access to the big enclosure. Come on in, guys. The much larger pond enclosure is a little distance from the house and bedrooms, linked by an overhead tunnel. But Pakaya is a super confident mum, and once given access, wastes no time heading straight through the tunnel, with baby clinging on tightly underneath. There's a lot of excited trills and chatting from the whole group as Pakaya immediately goes in search of the food put out by the care team. 18-month-old Enya and dad Enzo are never too far apart. It's the dominant male's job to make sure everyone is safe within his territory. And Enzo performs the role perfectly, as well as being a doting father. Enya doesn't seem too phased by the arrival of her new brother or sister. She's an independent and confident little female. But there's one individual who has struggled to fit into the group, 11-year-old Isla. Neither Pakaya nor her eldest daughter Oriana were particularly welcoming when she joined last year. But things have slowly started to improve. Kaya is quite a feisty girl, so obviously sort of introducing Isla into this group was always going to be a little bit more problematic than with some of the other more relaxed ladies. We go through really good weeks with Isla, and she actually has quite a good relationship with Oriana, um, but it is quite a close-knit little family group, so overall they're doing, they're doing OK. Monkey World is the only place left breeding captive woolly monkeys, so every baby born at the park is precious. Luckily for each one, the team who care for them have years of experience looking after captive bred infants and their mothers, and continue to increase their knowledge of this wonderful species. At the Marmoset domestic house, one of the families are about to be set a challenge. Ruby, Oscar and their family of four youngsters are about to be given a lively treat. On the menu today are live locusts, one of the marmoset's favourite foods. But primate care team member Louise is not making it easy for the family. The insects are being put into pillowcases stuffed with wood wool, which are then being hung up all around their outdoor enclosure. The family aren't going to need just strength and agility, they're going to need patience and perseverance too. Ruby leads the family out followed by the four young ones, with Dad Oscar bringing up the rear. Compared to the marmosets, the pillowcases are huge and a little daunting, but not for Mum. A larger lady, she loves her grub and uses her strength and coordination to reach down inside, striking Lucky first time. Well. Mum made it look easy, so the youngsters are keen to have a go. This large family is one of many success stories the team have had with rescued pet trade marmosets. Ruby and Oscar both came from that background, and despite a huge size difference, the little and large partnership hit it off straight away. The 
Their unexpected and somewhat surprising relationship resulted in two sets of twins, Merry and Pippin, and the youngest pair, Bilbo and Frodo. With space at a premium at the park, it wasn't planned or ideal. But the bonus of watching this family grow up has been a terrific boost for the primate care team. The Marmoset family are making the most of today's protein-packed pillowcase parcels. The locusts inside are nutritious and full of calcium and energy. Something this lot need in abundance. And when it's time to rest, there's nothing better than a family group hug. At the park's hospital, Chimp Jester has been on the operating table for more than an hour. Vets John Lewis and Dave Harding are about to try and remove a large malignant lump from the chimp's bottom lip. But to prevent the cancerous cells from spreading, they also need to cut away a large part of the lip. They've come up with a plan they hope will enable Jester to maintain a good quality of life. We don't know how it's going to affect his eating and drinking. He's a chimp. I suspect he'll eat and drink very well, thank you. It may not be um, competent initially, but he'll soon get the hang of it. Um, but I've never been involved in removing half a chimp's lower lip before, I don't know, but I suspect he'll cope very well. Saffron, you've got a scalpel blade. Dave needs to cut away enough of the lump and lip to ensure there's no danger of the cancer returning but he also has to leave enough of the area to be able to stitch the lip back together. OK, you ready? So Jester can eat and drink without reopening the wound. It's a question of trying to get a compromise between taking enough tissue and not, not too much. And we we'll try to get around about five millimetres either side of the tumour. Um, and I'm pretty hopeful that, that, that that's achievable. Dave has removed the lump and part of the lip quite quickly. The tricky part is now stitching it all back together. But once that's stitched, I think the bleeding there is minimal, John. OK. I think if we just do lots of intramuscular sutures, I think that's, that's stopped. There are lots of tiny muscles and blood vessels within the tissue making sewing it up a painstaking and fiddly job. But they all need to fully heal if Jester is going to be able to eat and make facial expressions. Vital if he's going to have a normal life within the Bachelor Chimp Society. Coming together nice. looking though. really nice, yeah. Dave. The more layers Dave can put in, the greater the chance of the stitches holding together and the lip healing. Once he's repeated the whole process on the inside, Dave decides to superglue the stitches for added safety. I mean, we can put some glue on the outside if you like. It's got a lot of stitches in there, but um, that's not a bad thing. Can, can we want to put some glue? OK, yeah, go yeah. for it. It's an incredibly neat job. Apart from the row of perfect stitches, it's hard to tell the large cancerous lump was ever there. That should just heal. Um, with just a slight degree of restriction of, of, of the uh, amount of expression that he can now do. H having said that, over time, we would hope that the tissue will stretch a little bit and th 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 there will be precious little impact to him on that, on that front. So hopefully we, we have been able to get some sort of decent margin of healthy tissue around it, then the chances of recurrence are much less. It's been a long but successful morning, and everyone is delighted with the outcome. Jester, still under sedation, is returned to the bedrooms at The Bachelors. Staff will keep a close eye on his recovery, but they're optimistic he has a good future ahead. The weather in Dorset can be a little dreary during the winter months, with colder temperatures and shorter days. So it's not surprising many of the primates prefer to spend their time snuggled up indoors. But at the Orangutan Nursery, things are about to liven up in a very colourful way.
It's all about fun this morning, so we've got loads and loads of balls that we've been donated, um, and it's all mixed in with various bits of food. Some of the balls have got jelly in, some of them have got pineapple in, and I'll be sure that they'll be very, very quiet for most of the day today, having a lot of fun in there. There's plenty to keep the youngsters playful. Along with the pineapple and jelly stuffed balls, James has distributed raisins and walnuts around the floor, which is now also covered in leaves and wood wool. The five orangutans who call the nursery home will have their work cut out to find their food this morning. Oshin leads the group into the playroom and in seconds they're all investigating the multicoloured display and wondering if there could be food involved. Eleven-year-old Sylvester strikes lucky first with a fruit jelly treat. His enthusiasm and size gives him an advantage over the three younger orangs in the group. But today's challenge needs brains and luck too. Rika thinks she's worked it out. Gather up as many as you can all at once. Bulu Mata rejects a couple before deciding this one conceals something worth getting to grips with. Oshin has her own way of doing things and getting results. Taking the easiest option in a slow and methodical manner is her approach, today and always. She's worked out there's plenty of food around without having to solve the problem of the pesky balls. Cracking open a walnut is quicker, even if it does attract attention from Rika. But Oshin doesn't share. Sylvester tries brute strength, pounding a ball with his fist, without success. The youngest member of the group, five-year-old Mimi, knows if she wants to hang on to her stash, keeping a low profile in the tunnel will give her time to work out what's what. The nursery orangs all have very individual personalities, mirrored by the way they've taken to the task. But however they roll, they're all enjoying today's enrichment. Things like this, it really does help them bond a little bit. They're all having lots of fun, there's plenty to go round. It's certainly a good way to keep them busy. Uh, some of them having food in and some of them don't, so they really have to check every single ball rather than just grabbing what they can. So they certainly will have their work cut out today. And when they've had enough, the youngsters do what they do best when presented with a colourful ball pit. Just have fun. The maintenance team have a big job on their hands this morning. A birch tree in the park has been felled for safety reasons, and rather than disposing of it, they've offered it to the primate care team. It's just what's needed for one of the outdoor enclosures, and it's being taken across to one of the park's newest groups, the Gwenons. We are going to a lot of work today for our four Gwenons. Um, You'll have seen how active these little guys are. Not just the youngsters, not just the two girls, but mum and dad too. Um, Dad's quite a big animal, really. He's over four kilos, so you'd think that he'd need something fairly substantial. But as you can see at the top, we've got some really fine little branches and twigs where they just bounce from one to another, and it's quite incredible to watch them. And it's a really natural behavior. So we thought rather than chopping it up for firewood or using it somewhere else, we'd keep it at the full length that it is, which is about 10 metres, and we're going to effectively plant this sort of dead tree, um, so it's going to be a massive big branch for them, something else for them to play on, and something else for them to really use their core strength and use all their skills that they need. Gwenons are primarily frugivores, meaning fruit and seeds make up the majority of their diet. But they also love to eat fresh leaves and browse, particularly when seasonal fruits aren't readily available. It's quite an operation to get the tree in place and secure. Hopefully, all this effort will be appreciated by the family of four. It should keep them busy and occupied for quite some time. With the tree in place, Nick opens the slides to let the Gwenons into the enclosure. The family love climbing and exploring and the new tree has a network of branches to navigate. It's 10 metres tall, but that doesn't phase them. 
Benny is the dad of the group. He was rescued from the Lebanon two years ago along with female Nia. The pair were confiscated as part of a crackdown on the worldwide trade in exotic pets. Since arriving at the park, the couple have had two daughters, Biff and more recently, Nala. They're a tight-knit family unit. Benny's priority today, however, is food, not family. The fresh green leaves and catkins on the tree have captured all its attention. But for daughter Biff, the new tree is one new, giant play park. She shows off her coordination and balance as she leaps around. She's a very happy and confident young female. Even five-month-old Nala is up high checking out the tree. But she's under the watchful eye of Mum Nia, who's never far away, ready to scoop up her little daughter if she goes too far or too high. Nia is proving to be an even better mum second time around. She's definitely matured into the role and is more attentive and protective with Nala. Life for wild red-bellied Gwenons is very different and getting desperate. More than 50% of their habitat has been destroyed in the last 30 years alone. Their numbers are in decline and the species, native to West Africa, is classed as endangered. The future for this Gwenon species is uncertain. The family at the park are the only known, legally kept, red-bellied Gwenons in captivity in the world. And they've certainly made the most of today's enrichment. It's where they really like to be. They like to be high up, they like to see what's going on, they feel safe. And they really came together when they all ran up there as a little family unit. Um, it's so nice to be able to see them up at this vantage point as well, so you can actually see them up at, up at the top of the trees. And Benny and the others went straight there, right to the edge of the branches, just to get all those lovely fresh green shoots and little catkins, so they're having a really good munch. And we're really, really pleased with how they've developed into such a lovely family unit and showing all of these really great natural behaviours, so we couldn't really be more happier with them. They only arrived in Dorset two years ago, but they've come a long way since then. And Benny, Nia, and their two daughters are a great success story at the park. Next time on Monkey Life. A snip for one of the Simpsons as Marmoset Bart gets a vasectomy. It is Finley, yes. That's, that's the, the, the right description for this. And a muddy breakfast scrubs up well for the capuchins.